Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and if you want to catch my newest video, I post one every day. In this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Honda's stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or sell. Honda is a Japanese manufacturer of automobiles, motorcycles, and power equipment. The company has been the world's largest motorcycle manufacturer since 1959, reaching a production of 400 million. It is also the world's largest manufacturer of internal combustion engines, producing more than 14 million internal combustion engines each year. It is the second largest Japanese automobile manufacturer. It's also the eighth largest automobile manufacturer in the world. Honda was the first Japanese automobile manufacturer to release a dedicated luxury brand, Acura, in 1986. The company also manufactures garden equipment, marine engines, personal watercraft, and power generators. Since 1986, Honda has been involved with artificial intelligence and robotics research. They also ventured into aerospace with the establishment of GE Honda Aero Engines. Honda is the first Japanese automaker to be a net exporter from the United States, exporting 109,000 Honda and Acura models while importing only 88,000. Let's get started with the model. This is a large cap company, 48 billion market cap. They're trading at $28 a share and they have 1.7 billion shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So you can see the company has lots of free cash flow each year, peaking in a trailing 12 months at 4.6 billion. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. And their net income seems to be decreasing each year from 10 billion down to 2 billion. Revenue is a sales for the company and their revenue peaked in 2018 at 151 billion. It's dropping a bit, it's down to 123 billion. This is the company's income statement and all these numbers are in Japanese yen. I converted the numbers into US dollars on my Excel spreadsheet. The top line is the revenue, the sales. Below that is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. For example, the payroll for the workers on the front lines making the cars. The difference between those two numbers is their gross profit. And that was the lowest in the trailing 12 months at 2.6 trillion yen. Then below that is operating expenses. An example of an operating expense is depreciation. And below that is operating income. And that seems to be decreasing each year. It was 800 billion in 2018. Now it's 330 billion. Below that is the interest they pay in their debt. Below that is other income and expenses. And that seems to be positive each year. Below that is their pre-tax income, then their taxes. So the company does have positive net income each year, but it seems to be decreasing, which is not a good thing to see when you're investing in a company. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. Then you have capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant, and equipment. Example of capital expenditures is a factory for making automobiles. Operating cash flow minus CapEx gives you your free cash flow. And this company has a ton of free cash flow each year. Half a trillion yen in the trailing 12 months. That's the most they've had in the past four years. The company issues a lot of debt each year, but it seems like it's rolling its debt. They're paying down a similar amount of debt as they're issuing each year. Let's look at their operating cash flow. Operating cash flow is a better indicator of a company's health than net income. The way you could think about operating cash flow, it's net income converted to cash because net income is accounting profit and loss. It's not actual cash. And you have to follow the cash anytime you invest in a company. And the way you calculate operating cash flow, you start with net income. That was half a trillion yen. Then you have to add back 670 billion of depreciation. They also pass through a $158 billion gain on the income statement. We have to subtract that out on the cash flow from operations section. So you can see there's lots of things going on on the CFO section. Leave a comment if you have a question on anything. Even though the company reported a half a trillion dollar profit, they actually generated $1 trillion of cash flow. 
net income was decreasing each year, but you could see CFO was pretty steady. It did drop a little in 2019, but 2018, 2020, and a trailing 12 months, their operating cash flow is pretty similar. Let's look at the capital structure. $79 billion of equity, $71 billion of debt. They have 53% equity, 47% debt. And their net debt is $44 billion, so they could pay off a lot of their debt with the cash on their balance sheet if they wanted to. Their WAC is 8.5%, and that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's $62 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $57 billion. We divide that by 1.7 billion shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $33. They're trading at $28, so they're trading at a 16% discount. It's a buy according to the model. Simply Wall Street is way higher than me. They're at $73 a share, so they're saying the stock is really undervalued. It looks like the stock peaked about $35 a few years ago. But it came down quite a bit. It did come back up, but it's trading at a nice discount relative to its all-time high. It looks like the company cut their dividend in 2020. They're paying a 2% dividend yield. And they pay out 42% of their net income, 22% of their free cash flow. This company has a beta pretty close to 1, so the stock moves with the market. The stock has increased 4% in the past 52 weeks. That's lower than S&P 500, which increased 14%. The 52-week low was 19, the high was 30. The stock is trading above its 200-day moving average, but below its 50-day moving average. About 700,000 shares are traded each day on this stock. Of the 1.7 billion shares outstanding, 1.6 billion are on float. Only 2.5% are held by institutions, and hardly any of the shares are shorted. If you invested $10,000 into this company 10 years ago, you'd have $6,400 today. The stock has not performed well. It's down an average of 4% a year for the past 10 years, 36% loss overall. Nomura, the Japanese investment bank, owns 5.25% of the company's stock. Sumitomo owns 4.4%. Then another company owns 3%, Vanguard, then BlackRock. Let's look at their financial ratios. The average PE is 10, the median is 14. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They're at 20.5, so investors are paying about $20.50 for $1 of earnings. Price to sales is stock price over sales per share. They're at 0.4, they have a really low price to sales ratio. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. They're at 0.6. They also have a really low price to book ratio. And the way you calculate book value per share is equity over shares outstanding. Equity is assets minus liabilities on the balance sheet. And they have 79 billion of equity, 69 billion of tangible equity because they have some intangible assets on their balance sheet. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. They can easily cover their interest payments. ROE is net income over equity. They have a low ROE at 3%. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. They're at 1.3. They have a good current ratio. They have about 3 trillion yen of cash on their balance sheet, 2.5 trillion of receivables, and 1.5 trillion of inventory. So it does appear that the company is well funded. Their free cash flow was 4.5 billion, working capital 14 billion, and a $1 billion dividend payment. So they have about $18 billion of funding. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to similar companies, I've done videos of 11 companies in the same industry as Honda. And if Honda has a number in green, they're better than the average. If they have a number in red, they're worse than the average. So they're better in all the price multiples. They have a really low price to sales and price to book. That means they're generating lots of sales, but they do have a good price to earnings ratio. It's just not nearly as good as their price to sales ratio. They have a good current ratio. The ROE is low. Some companies in this industry have negative or no ROE. The companies that have no ROE is because they have negative equity and negative earnings. They have 47% debt, which is much better than the average. And they're a little smaller than the average company at 48 billion market cap. And they're one of the few companies that does pay a dividend. So to summarize, I do have them trading at a 16% discount. This is a really important company. They do provide a product that's very needed. People drive motorcycles and cars, and they've been around for a while, this company. So they're not going anywhere. It's definitely a good long-term hold. 
even though the stock has struggled the past decade. I ranked their free cash flows 9 out of 10. They're really strong and it was the highest in the channel 12 months. I ranked their revenue 7 out of 10. It has been decreasing a bit, but this was a crazy year with COVID, so everybody's sales were lower. And I ranked their ratios 8 out of 10. The only ratio that's not so good is their ROE. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.